Well, hey there, Traveler. Welcome back to the end of the seven dice. Wingover is pretty damn excited. Hey, why don't you just go over there and see how he's doing? Ah, Traveler, yes. I'm so excited to tell the tale for today. You're going to be like, oh, that was pretty neat, or oh, that stuff was pretty cool, but I've been waiting for this for so long. Anywho, Travelers. Let me, uh, oh, oh, right, the interns. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce those Battle Bard interns. This is... Oh, God. Oh. Oh, God. Travelers, I am... I'm so sorry, but... It appears that... Bloody Craig and... Murdering Samantha... Have killed slash murdered one another. Oh, my... Oh, the blood is everywhere from Craig. This is unbelievable. Michael! Yep. Um... We got two bodies over here. Can you come clear it? Again? What do you mean again? I mean, sure. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm coming. I'm coming. Whoa! Looks like they uh, murdered slash killed each other. Well, that's the idea. I think it's like in the names and stuff, you know. All right. Well, I guess I'll get to cleaning. Thanks. That was a uh, pretty crazy. Hey, traveler. Anyways, if you want some pretty rad sound effects or cool things for your shows or your game at the table, you need to go check out Battle Bards, and they'll send someone over to your house. Maybe not really, but maybe they will. And they'll stand there and they'll play those amazing sound effects. Like maybe you're thinking, I just really want leather shoes walking on wooden floorboards. They have you covered. Don't you worry. So go on down there to BattleBards.com Use the promotion code BALLAD7DICE to get 15% off of your subscription. Let's see here. Oh, one last thing, travelers, before we get into this tale. I have a review fan mail from Devrin11. Somebody actually gave their child numbers in their name. Ha! <laughs> what will humans think of next? Let's see, it says, Love these guys! Exclamation mark! Nice job! Keep up the great, fun, and wonderful adventures! Exclamation mark! Five stars! Why, thank you, Devrin11! Or do people just call you Eleven? I don't know, maybe. So, travelers, where did we leave off? Ah, yes. We were just discovering what was happening at the Salty Spittoon. Oh, shit. Ow! Yeah, we were discovering what was happening at the Salty Spittoon, but now we are about to discover a very chilling truth about a party member, as well as possibly an episode in space. Join me, travelers, as I bring you the case of Erin Bordeaux, part four. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm playing MZ, the third level Get the Yankee Ranger. Hey, my name is Humberto, and I play Borden, the level 3 Dwarven Cleric. Hi, my name is Brent. I am playing Kelsar, the level 3 Tiefling Paladin. This is Evan. I'm playing Ronnie, the third level Half Elf Bard. Where we last left off. You guys had just gone down to the docks after learning the horrible tale of the Salt Spittoon and laughing about it. You managed to avoid getting arrested for the death of five civilians and a strange, lithid like creature. And after going down to the docks, you quickly found the ship that was responsible for this gruesome tale. And when Ronnie went up to go talk to the cloaked figure, he saw it was a human woman who... So Ronnie went and saw this cloaked figure who was a human woman. She pulled her hood back, and after she exclaimed that he's still alive, suddenly there was a white flash of light, and all of you were blinded for a moment, and yeah. she was gone. So we pick up from there. Uh, oh, God, what, 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 was, what was that about? Ronnie, what did you do? Uh... I just, I, I didn't say anything. I just kind of walked up and 
uh, there was a lady, and then I was blinded. Why does this always happen to us? I don't know. I might be cursed. <laughs> yeah, you are cursed, and we are cursed with you. Yeah. You are our curse. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're going into the salty spittoon, which is apparently cursed too, so we're going to be double cursed. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Why is everything cursed around here? <laughs> so you guys are just shouting in the harbor. <laughs> A lot of anger between Bordon and Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Death Shift is a place of rage. <laughs> I sense more anger from Bordon. <laughs> yeah, our good aligned people are just super angry all the yeah. time. Yeah. They're so stressed. <laughs> it's tough being good all the time, okay? Yeah. It, it's easy to be an asshole. It's hard to be a good guy. <laughs> Fair enough. Because we keep, you know, like the feelings inside, you know, mm -hmm. all the anger, you know, yeah. the hatred. All the anger I have towards Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> so we should investigate the salty spittoon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so you guys are gonna try to get up on this ship. There is no boardwalk that's leading up to it, but it is roped down. All right. So how high up would the uh? How high up do we actually have to get? It's probably around like seven or eight feet. Uh, Ronnie, since you are our rogue, could you please just like scout everything before we actually... I'm a, I'm a bard, not a rogue. I, yeah, but I mean, you are the best one for this kind of stuff, right? Mm. Look, look at me. I look like a barrel with an armor. I have a grappling hook and rope. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's use that grappling hook and rope then. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so that's what I'll do. I'll put the grappling hook onto my 50 feet of hemp rope and just throw it up there. All right, you want to make me a range check? Sure. 19 altogether. Neat. All right, yeah, you hook it up there, and it hooks onto the railing, no problem. Nice shot, MZ. So who wants to go first? I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go first, just in case if, like, we can ambush. At least then I can, you know be the meat shield shouldn't i don't know maybe the people that actually are actually you know like stealthy do that i'm just saying we should check before we should, yeah. you know hop on board of that ship all right i'll go up there i have a plus five to stealth all right he'll go up there <laughs> Wrong. okay so mz you want to make me a stealth check and an athletics check to climb the rope 20 22 on my athletics 19 on my stealth you scale up this rope no problem and you guys watch it's kind of freaky how quiet he is while he's doing all this like he even skimmed the water a little bit but it didn't make any sounds he crawls up onto this ship and MC when you get onto this ship you notice that the deck is painted red it doesn't look like it's bloodstained because usually that's like a darker almost brown this looks like it's a, like a, just a blood red that's just been painted all over the deck. Okay, I'll, uh, I keep my communication stone in a, an upper left pocket, and I'll just kind of whisper into it. The deck has been painted red. What else do I see? Over. You can do either a perception or investigation. I'll do perception. 13. MZ, while you're looking around on this deck... There's not a lot that stands out. Most of it's just, you know, your regular ship stuff. But one thing that stands out to you is right near the railing that would be facing towards where you guys were all standing, there is a little bit of a scorched mark and a few things that look like they've been burned to ashes. Like right on the boat, like right where I would be going over? Yeah, like go in, it's like right at the railing, to, and it's facing towards where you guys were standing. A bunch of scorch marks. Hmm. Do you have Arcana? No. Do I see anyone on this boat? No, you don't actually. I'll go over. You'll go like back to the party, or you start looking around. Yeah, like I'm. Um, I'm assuming that I'm just sort of hanging onto the rope, looking over the edge of the boat. So I'll actually go over onto the boat now. Okay. Yeah, so you go onto the boat, no problem. The deck itself, it seems, other than just being painted, it seems clean and those scarf marks. Okay. 
I'll put my hand over the railing of the boat and sort of signal for, you know, like someone to come up. Okay, you guys see MZ do that. Probably everything's okay, right? I think that's what that means. The, the communication code, stone. I'll say the coast is clear. Oh, okay. That's athletics, right? Yeah. Got 20. Nin like ni nice. 19. Nice. I got 10. Okay. 10's what you needed. Alright. <laughs> 12. <laughs> oh, okay. Ronnie gets up this no problem to everyone's surprise. And Bordon, you have a little bit of a struggle, that's not a problem. Kalsar, there were a few times where you were sure that you were going in that water. And you're in full plate, so you would just sink to the bottom. Yeah. So you all haul yourself up onto the deck, and you look around, you see the scorch marks that MZ just points out quick, and you see the blood red painted deck. Is this blood? <laughs> I try to smell it. I grab the grappling hook and the rope, and Pack it all away. Okay. Nice. I guess we should go inside. Yep. Yeah, there's a door leading down towards the back. I'm opening it up. Uh, Bordon, when you glance down at that scorch mark, can you make me an arcana check? Sure. Six! Yeah, you have no idea. It could have been from anything. I'm gonna go with Ronnie and just. Because I got a good stealth and I want to get the most out of it. So Ronnie, you go over to the door, you open it up, and thanks to your dark vision, you can still see down below. There are no lights. You see that there are a number of hammocks that are rocking back and forth. There's barrels, there's ropes that are on the wall. There's a lot of fishing equipment. Uh, some of those hooks to help you lift boxes easier. And it's just stairs leading down. Well, it looks pretty clean down there. I guess we should go down. Is this the only way down? Yes. Aside from the... There's a central area on the deck, but it's covered up. That would open up. You'd need to activate a mechanism to open it up, and then they would be able to dump or haul things down. Okay. Just wanted to know. Do you want to go, Ronnie, or do you want me to go first? I'll go first. Okay. And Kelsar and Bordon? I guess we'll go with them. Yeah, so of course. Okay. So you guys start going down. You see there's some sleeping quarters here and there there's a lot of things that barrels have been cracked open boxes have been emptied like obviously this place has been thoroughly scavenged but walking around you find two hammocks that actually have blankets on them there's no one in the hammocks but they're very fine very nice blankets and it looks like there's a few empty containers for food that don't belong in this day and age, like plastic containers. And Ronnie, you recognize this. You know what plastic is. The others don't. Uh, you know, this looks like something from my dimension. Call this plastic. It's what all the good stuff's made out of. Seriously? Plastic. Doesn't seem very durable. It looks wasteful and could destroy environments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks like it could kill a turtle. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know. <laughs> It still has little remnants of some food and stuff inside it, and there's like a couple empty bottles that had some sort of carbonated drink in them, but it's long since done. Well, this is all really weird. Uh, these uh, blankets look kind of expensive. I kind of think we should take them. You know what? I, I think I'll just... Because everything, like, I don't know, smells fishy, aside from the pun. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just sense evil. So, you sense for evil, and you don't pick up anything. You sense there's a bit of negative energy in the air, mm -hmm. just from, probably associated with the amount of death with this ship and how gruesome it was, but other than that, you aren't getting anything from this area. So the tales are actually true, that's what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, the ship was only imprisoned probably a couple months ago, from the nobles doing this. Like, this is a recent event. Okay. But what about the plastic plastic containers and all that? It seems like people were... might have been squatting here or something after the fact. This isn't, isn't this like a bad neighborhood? The docks? Uh, they're a little rough and tumble here and there. I mean, it's, it's a lot of, like, merchantile and stuff will come through here to pick up their wares. And just a lot of labor will be working here. Could a couple of chosen already been here? Possibly. 
If that's why there's, you know, plastic. Makes sense. Ronnie, it doesn't look like the food's that old either. Probably maybe a day. Okay. Um, you know, does anyone have any like kind of uh, like good investigation? Maybe we should look for any kind of hidden doors or any kind of kind of place people be hiding. I mean, anyone can make an investigation roll if you want to. Yeah, I just have like plus zero on it, so I'm thinking just one look a better investigation. Okay, but I told the group that like I tried to sense like for evil, and I couldn't sense anything. Everything seemed to be okay. Yeah, but since evil doesn't really pick up if there's like like hidden compartments or like if there's another room to this that we can't see. Oh yeah, no no. Sorry, yeah, you're right. I'm just saying that like we should look for something but I couldn't sense anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just mm. yeah. I got a thirteen on a investigation. So you're looking through and you can't find a whole lot. One thing you notice is one of the blankets smells like perfume, mm. like a, a very nice perfume. Could it be a couple of squatters? You're a ranger, right? You got like one of them dog noses. You track a scent? Uh, not quite. Do any of you other people investigate, or you guys just? I'll try. I'll try investigating. Yeah. Yeah, I can try as well. Yeah, me too. One of us is bound to get something. Oh, I got natural twenty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 Wasting wow. those okay. natural 20s. <laughs> Ronnie lifts up the blanket uh -huh. because, so you comment on how, I imagine, MZ, you say something about the smell of the blanket, how it smells perfumey. Yeah. So Ronnie picks up the blanket and smells it. Ronnie, the smell is very familiar to you. And with your natural investigative talents, while you're holding this blanket, a little locket falls out and falls onto the ground. Suddenly, it, almost like the sound just clicks into your mind. This was the same perfume that Amelia was wearing. It was the same smell that the shape-shifting creature was trying to mimic when you encountered it not too long ago at Geldspar. It was the perfume that your daughter wears. And crouching down to pick up the locket, you hold it and it says A. Erispear, which is her last name. It's, uh, it's my daughter's locket. It smells like my daughter, which is a weird thing to say. <laughs> also, none of you guys knew he had a daughter. Wait. Also, I have a daughter. Wait, what the I also, I also just learned this recently. I got a few questions. <laughs> a, how do you have a daughter? And B, how did you convince someone stupid enough to sleep with you? I don't remember either. <laughs> At three, I am assuming that you're not a good father. <laughs> and he's an absent father. Yeah. Shots fired. No offense. Well, some of that. Some offense. <laughs> no offense. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> some offense. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think we should do next? I don't know. Like, can we try to? Well, wait. I don't know. We can't just we can't just like skim past the fact that if we find out that he's a daughter. Who, like, who's the mother, and... Not sure. <laughs> Not sure. So it just happened. Yeah, well, how old is, like, how old is she? Like, what, what the hell, like... Fifteen? Hmm. Like, is she here? Like, maybe we should find out, like, what's going on with your daughter. Well, I haven't seen her since I died. Is she in danger? I have no idea. Well, maybe she's here, in this dimension. Like, maybe there's someone around that knows about her. Uh, yeah, maybe she was the one who left me the note. That's odd. So, my father is here, your daughter yeah. is here, so maybe some of your, like, I don't know, like, geared ones are here as well, uh, Kelsar and yeah. MC. This is so weird. Maybe. That makes any sense. Why would they? Uh, I watched my friend die. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know that my father was dead as well, so... Why would they all be here, though? Why are we here? That's a good point too. So this boat is completely empty, but there was only a trace of Ronnie's daughter. He doesn't even seem to really care, so. What do you do with that locket? I mean, I like met her, I just met her, <laughs> so. What do you do with that locket? <laughs> You're the s salt of the earth, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see if I can open it up. 
You open it up, and it's a picture of her, and it's a picture of her mother uh, on the other side. Hmm. She also looks older than when you last seen her. She looks like she's in her 20s. So, uh, last I remember, my kid was 15. This doesn't look like any 15-year-old I saw. I mean, it's clearly her, but she's definitely older. I wonder how long we've been in this state, this dimension. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, time isn't passing the same way. I mean, if they are from the same dimension that we were, and time goes faster here compared to, like, our own dimensions, does it mean that everything sort of, sort of was okay in the end? Because when I left my dimension, everything was going to hell. When I left my realm, you know, so it just gets me thinking, you know, maybe everything was fine. I think these are questions for later. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> it's just gassy right now. Yeah. I don't agree. Well, I don't know what to do with this information. Uh, we don't really have like a trail of places to go. What about Albedo? Maybe he knows something. Sure. Can I try using one of my abilities? Definitely. It's kind of a long shot, but I don't know. I can detect portal. So I can detect the distance and the direction to the closest planar portal. Does that detect current portals or ones that have recently been opened? Ooh, I don't know. I'll let you use it in the sense that if you make me a survival check, if you roll good enough, you'll be able to detect if there was portals. Okay. Because this one, it's saying basically you detect the distance the direction of the closest planar portal one mile of you. Mm -hmm. So that's saying like open portals. I got a 19. This place is lit up like a hot spot. There has been so many portals that have been opened and closed here. I'll let everybody know that. Well, that's odd. Huh. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's why there are like scorch marks on the upper deck. So like, maybe is this is this ship like a hub for like other dimensions or something? Is it related to that? That I don't know. All I know is that there has been a lot of portals opened up here. I wonder if more people are going to be coming through here, but... So what happens if the, the ship sinks? I guess what... Well, I mean, technically people would just teleport into the water. Probably. I don't know, are portals, are portals tied to a spot or are they tied to an object? Would you just come under the boat wherever it is? It depends on how good you are with that. Like, if you're like a master of the craft, you can tie it more to an object. But most people just tie it to a spot because it's easier. Maybe we should let the guild know about all these portals. They might know something about this, or at least want to know that people are coming in and out through here. That's mm -hmm. actually a good idea, Ronnie. He's been sober for a yeah. day. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not like a you. good idea. You know, Ronnie? He's rolled like three natural 20s. <laughs> you know, Ronnie, you're a very productive person when you're not drinking or, you know, trying I'm to... I'm so miserable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... He's a little shaky. Yeah. I, yeah. I think you did, uh, it pains me to say this, but I think you did earn a drink after that, so. Well, they have drinks at the, at the guild, so let's go back. I yeah. Think, yeah, yeah, I think we got everything we could out of this. Uh, so you guys go, and you rush on back. It's after midnight, and you come on in. And you're a little wiped out. Thankfully, that nap let you kind of be energized for a little longer. You make it back to the headquarters, and it doesn't look like anyone's awake right now. Yeah, but I don't think that can wait. Okay, so where do you go? Just uh, do you go to like the dorms or the offices? I'm going to Astoria. So you guys rush over to Astoria's office. You go down the corridors, and you knock on her door. After a few short moments, she opens up the door. You see that there's a small candle on her desk. It looks like she was working on something. Ah, uh, board on. Oh, everyone. Wow. Um, do come on in. Excuse me. She sits down at her desk. What can I help you all with? So MZ can explain her. Hey, it was Ronnie's idea. Ronnie, do you have something to talk about? We went down to the uh, Salty Spittoon, and there was a whole lot of portal activity going around there. You see she, like, catches her hand as it's, like, going out. She's like, God, I hate that. Um, portal activity. What kind of portal activity are we talking about? Is there one still open there? No, but uh, lots have been open and closed recently. Interesting. 
it would seem most likely then that we have a plane walker. We have another one actually who is working with us at New Dawn, the small town where the Valkyries Chosen is set up. There are people who can naturally teleport into different worlds and different places. But I don't think it's just one person. Oh? Yeah, because we saw, I don't know, like some blankets and some, what was it called again? Pl plus decks? What was it again? Right. Yeah, that's right. No, play, play stikes. That's play stikes. Oh yes, yeah. of course, play yeah. stikes. So we saw this play, play stikes, play stikes things. Yes, it's like a tongue twisting word, I know. Yeah. And yeah, it seems like they are from Ronnie's dimension. Interesting. Do you know who they could be? I know that's a long shot, Ronnie. I mean, that's an entire world. But do you have any clues? Well, it could be my daughter, but I don't think she's a plane walker. Huh. She just, like, kind of catches herself. Ronnie, I'm... Okay, you have a daughter. Um, That's what I said. So what everybody's I said. impressed. <laughs> wow. So, your daughter, uh, did she ever exhibit behavior that she could teleport on whim? Ronnie, were you around at all for your child? Yeah. No, uh, I only saw her for, like, maybe a day and a half. Uh, so I don't remember any teleporting, but... <laughs> okay. I love that. <laughs> okay, well, perhaps the person she's with then has this ability. Oh, she was with a robot. Are robots planeswalkers? What ro a robot? What is a about, robot? Yeah, what, what is a robot? I'm sorry, Ronnie, we're not from your world, so there's a few things that we just are unaware of. Are you talking about the vision? It's like a it's like a golem, but it's made out of metal. So as Ronnie's describing this, you guys, like I said before, that that vision is almost like it just happened constantly in your brain, and you remember seeing a man completely made out of metal running beside an elven woman and a dwarven woman on a giant albino boar, and the two women were teleporting from rooftop to rooftop, being chased by the cult. Yeah, that's right. It was a seven foot tall man. Who looked like he was made out of, like, a mithril box-like body. Right, the vision you shared. Did any of you recognize the people in that vision? So there was this robot, um, then there was the elven woman and the older dwarven woman. I think the, yeah, the dwarven woman is my sister. And, Ronnie, looking at that locket, the woman in the picture is the same one from your vision. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're the only one who knows this because you're the only one who looked at the locket. Oh, I'm the only one who looked at the locket. Oh, okay. Uh, well, can we actually see the... Couldn't see that lady close up enough to recognize them, right? In that vision? You could see them You could see them fairly well while they were like jumping and hopping because you were seeing it through almost like... Think of like a camera following them along the side while they were jumping on these rooftops. It's, uh, it's my daughter must be here. It's her from the vision. Show everyone that locket. So everyone sort of leans forward and looks at the small photograph. And you see there's a beautiful elven woman who's in this photo. And then her mother beside her. And it just confuses you more. Does she have like 19 charisma as well? No, but <laughs> she looks like she looks very beautiful. And everyone's just sort of staring at the picture like, how did that happen? <laughs> I'll tell you about my 19 did... charisma. <laughs> Ronnie, were you very successful in your world? Were you very well known? How did... Uh, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> he has a daughter. <laughs> I mean, let's face it though. This man could probably talk us into buying back our own clothes from him. I'm not an He's idiot. He's Joffrey in the hall. <laughs> Galsar, I'll sell you your own clothes for 10 gold. Deal. Wait, shit. <laughs> yeah. And done. <laughs> Cool. I am the savvy businessman. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is alarming news. So we have your family involved in this, and both of them are teleporting around as planeswalkers. This is incredibly important because Dorum is hunting after planeswalkers. That's not good. We're not sure why exactly, but she wants them, and it's not for something good. Most likely for the giant portal that she's trying to open, which would make sense. Well, if Dorum's after her... 
not that these planeswalkers, then we maybe we should find Ronnie's daughter. Uh, and my sister. And your sister. I haven't forgotten. Uh, Lord, on your family is all in favor. <laughs> this is so confusing. I know. Okay, well, I'll be sure to let everyone else know about this, so that if they see either of these people, we can have an alert going. In the meantime, we're actually going to need you to depart the city tomorrow to get going on that reconnaissance mission. Will do. Yeah. It's very important that you go on this. Our other teams are already on the field elsewhere. We need you out there to try to locate the map from these creatures. There will be more information when you get to New Dawn. Thank you. Yes, thanks. I've also received word from Sven. It seems that we have a deserter from Doran's ranks oh. who's made it back safely. And he's willing to share information and help lead you to where the caravan's going to be. If not for him, we would have actually missed the caravan. It turns out they're going to be a day early. That sounds too good to be true. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. How do you know that's not a trap? Well, we've been sure to comb through his mind with magic. He let us do it. And it seems that his village was attacked. Or more, he was forced to attack his village from Dorm's people. Hmm. He used to be a mercenary that worked along Tempest Wave. That's a mercenary group. And he was ordered to attack his own village, and he just wants out, and he wants revenge. That's fair. That's what we can gather from that. All right. Well, I guess we should find this deserter then and get whatever information we can. He'll be at New Dawn, and he'll be able to meet you okay. there. His name is Opus. Opus. Thank you. You should get some sleep. I know it's been a difficult night and probably a lot of shocking revelations, it seems, one day after another. We honestly expected you guys to relax. That it was a legitimate thing. We didn't think you were going to run around the town, but... That tends to not happen with us. Well, best of luck, Death Shift. Thanks. So get some rest and leave in the morning? Yes. Someone will be here in the morning to help you get to New Dawn. Okay. So she sees you out of her office, and then you hear the door close, and then you hear the sound of a portal being opened in her area as she probably steps through and it closes behind her. So what do you guys do with the rest of the night? It's well after midnight. <laughs> I rest. Yeah, I yeah. think we need a rest. So while you're resting, Borodon, your sleep is rather fitful. You keep tossing and turning. You try to get some rest and you just can't and when you finally fall asleep you wake up immediately and you're frustrated obviously you're exhausted you had a long frustrating weird day and it's just gotten weirder as you look out all around you realize that you're on a plateau floating in space there's a massive mountain on this plateau that doesn't look like it would fit, but it does. And all on it, you see there are numerous giant stone doors, all etched with dwarven carvings. And you see on yourself, there's a strange, rainbowy, shimmery black sludge that's coating most of your body. What the hell? And there's a large door just a few feet away from you. There's only the door. So I try to open the door. First I try to read the runes, like the dwarven inscriptions. So, you remember from school, uh -huh. there's ancient dwarven runes that you've had to read. You've had to study. A lot of it was for religious practices because of a lot of old ancient dwarven text about the gods has been handed down through generations of in the mountain of Mondragnum. And you recognize some of these runes. Some of these runes were from the worship of your god, Dumathoin. And it was about the collection of knowledge, the protection of knowledge. And looking more at this mountain, it starts looking less like a mountain and more like a vault. What the? Okay, so uh, I, I try to open the door. So you try to open up the door, you push on it, you knock on it. And after a little bit of trying to get this door open, you notice the black sludge never comes off you and smears on anything. It's just always on you. You can hear the sound of feet walking along a cavern and a cane or a staff clicking along. You hear, 
Hold on, hold on. And then this massive stone door opens up and you see this old, old dwarf. He is balding on top. He has long white hair coming down, a long white flowing beard that's braided along the sides. And he's leaning on a staff and he's eating a piece of toast. He's in very ornate robes. Oh, Borodon. Do I, do I know you? In a sense, you may know me in other forms. I am the keeper of all things. Knowledge, power, secret. And then he prods your amulet on your chest, your holy symbol. That right there is mine. Wait, wait, what? That, that was given to me. <laughs> I mean the symbol itself. <gasps> I am Dumathor. And then my head explodes. Yeah, bored on dies. You guys just hear this loud <laughs> pop. It's just his head. What the? Oh my! And, and then and then I I, I so I it just knee right away. <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! Sorry, sorry, Lord. Quite literally. <laughs> literally, yes. <laughs> he hands you a towel. Yeah. What? Well, what's this? Covering my body. What? What's this like slimy thing? Borodon, when using your powers, have you encountered anything? Voices, perhaps? Yes, I think so. You've got the attention of something old. You see, time's not just linear, as we all know. Time loops around continuously, and things like to swim in the time stream. And you bumped into something when trying to reverse that note. Oh, okay. Clean yourself off and throw that off the side. We can't have it here. Okay. So I just clean myself and get whatever, like the towel, and I just throw it away. Yeah, and when you wipe down, it's well, obviously it's magic, right? It just it cleans it off perfectly, and you toss it off. And he's already starting to walk inside. Okay, so I, I follow him. So as he's walking, he's finishing his toast up and brushes off his one hand. Bordon. The power I've given you is a dangerous one. And it's the one power that I have been entrusted to hold on to for all the pantheons. You mean like the time travel? Yes. Chronomancy is dangerous, and there is a reason it has been outlawed across the stars. But I, I thought you were just... Not just, I'm sorry, my lord, but like... I thought you were the god of knowledge and stones. And what's the greatest secret than the secret to travel everywhere, every moment, and collect every piece of knowledge? Yes. Everyone wants this ability, but it's too powerful, too destructive. We used to let it run freely and it destroyed many timelines. Oh boy. So, how much am I in trouble? I mean, because I'll probably have to use my powers, but I'll probably have to use them in times of danger, right? Not like at will. I gave you those powers to be used. You're sitting on the precipice of a very destructive event. If you fail, I'm afraid we won't be able to hold that creature back. He waves a hand, and while you're walking through this hallway, you realize that it's opening up into this large, beautiful cavern. There are so many doors that are leading to different areas, and they all have these ancient dwarven symbols. It looks like you're starting to enter into this metropolis of doorways and caves and passages. There's tomes just littered everywhere in piles. Just every piece of knowledge in the multiverse is probably inside this mountain. And if you had time, you could go through it all. But it's just overwhelming. And he waves a hand and you see the ceiling sort of shimmer. And you see so many powerful, godly beings. And it looks like they're all focused on holding up this magical wall around the planet. They're trying to hold something at bay and you see a darkness 
grabbing onto this. You see tentacles slithering around and slapping at this wall. And ever so slightly, you can notice as time passes, their feet shift a little bit back that they can't keep holding it. So we are fighting a being, a being that is stronger than the gods themselves? Yes. <laughs> Older. <sighs> That's why you're rushing to shut that door so that we don't need to hold it back anymore. Okay. So, one question, which may sound completely stupid, but why don't the gods just smite the person who is trying to open the door? Because he's still a human, right? Yes, Dorum is human, in a sense. Just as you are dwarven, in a sense. Ever since this parasite has affected you, it has changed the very being of who you are, just as Dorum has been changed and shifted. The reason that we don't use our godly powers to smite is because we cannot. I am just an avatar of Dumathoin. I need to get back right away to help. But... If even one of us strays for too long from holding the wall, then it'll cave in. And we've tried to find ways. We've sent champions after Dorum, but they just get torn asunder. Heroes of legend have tried to find her, and they've come up fruitless. But one constant that seems to be going around is your names. All four of you are needed for this. That's... that's insane. Hmm. <laughs> He just starts laughing heartily. He's like, <laughs> yes, yes it is. I mean, we're godly beings. There are hundreds of us, and we have to send four mortals. But, as it always is with the gods, we always need the mortals to assist us in endeavors like these. And we feel honored. But, but Bordon, the reason I have you here is to discuss your abilities. You're dangerous in a sense that your abilities can change a lot. But in the other sense, you're needed to have these abilities. Only seven other dwarves have ever had this power in history. We cannot just give it out freely. There are penalties that'll come with this, Borodon, but you need to stop this creature lest everything you know will be destroyed. Okay. I'll do my... I'll, I'll do it. I'll do my best. And I'll keep all, all the other members of my group, you know, like together as well, because sometimes they just go astray. Wink, wink. Mortals always Ronnie. do. I know. <laughs> yes, chaos, fire, blood, time. Strange elements to combine together, but they are needed. That's true. Uh, it may sound a little bit selfish, but how's my kingdom? Do you know if, if it still stands? Do you want to know the answer to this question? I don't know. Because knowledge is dangerous, right? Yes, but... <sighs> yes, I would, I would like to know. As unfortunate as it may be. You come up to a, a small pool. And you see little fish are swimming in it. And he taps the side of it with his staff. And you see the pool shimmer. And you see the city of Monregno, this beautiful city built on this mountain. The high carved walls, the gates crushed inwards. You see a lot of these houses look worse off. You see there's been a lot of weather damage. Like a number of years appear to have passed by and damaged these buildings. And you see a lot of undead walking and marching through the streets. But every so often, you also see dwarves in heavy armor that appears to be made out of bones and other materials, and they come through and they cut through a small pack of wandering dead and then quickly rush into another building. Your kingdom stands in a sense. They hide in the mountains, but they don't have all the time in the world. Thank you. Thank you for showing me that. It's, it's a bitter pill, but... I have to swallow it. I mean, I don't know what a pill is, but... <laughs> <laughs> you had medicine. So. Yeah. I asked you to come here because I wanted to explain your powers a little. Please. They'll unlock more 
as you get stronger, and you have the ability to shape time around you, and it is dangerous, but it is useful. I don't want you to not use it freely, but I want you to understand the ramifications. If you continuously mess with time too much, there are beings that will come after you. They're known as the inevitable. They sheriff the worlds, making sure that law and order is followed, and time magic is the strongest thing they hunt after. So they're not evil, they're just neutral. Right. They're constructs from a planet that is entirely made of machines. I can protect you a bit from their gaze, but I'm just warning you, the more you affect time on large scales, just be prepared to face these creatures. I will. Thank you for warning me. I'll, I'll do my best to use my powers only when necessary. Best of luck, Borodon. Thank you. Uh, just one last question, if you don't mind. Is the person that I'm trying to find my actual father? Borodin was a good man. Was? I mean, I know that he died. Well, your father is still alive in the same sense that you are. Oh, that's good. Th that's, that's great. Great to know, thank you. Or, or is it not good? It all depends on the actions of those around. It could be a good thing, it could be bad. Time will tell, right? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Bordon, I must get back and aid my brothers and sisters in holding that wall. Be careful. Thank you, Domatoin. Thank you. Know that we are always watching. Kelso heard that uh, that terrible pun from Cross Dimensions, and he's just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Bordon, suddenly you get the sense once more of falling really quickly, and you bolt awake as the sun rises. <gasps> so I'm all like sweaty. What the? Yeah. <sighs> and the rest of you wake up. What, Bord? And you see Bordon's breathing heavy, and he's drenched in sweat. Bordon, are you okay? What's going on? I just had like this weirdest. I don't know if it's a dream or a vision or I don't know maybe an actual event but I just met the like the avatar of my god Durmathoin and I I've seen like so many gods like hundreds of them they're holding a barrier you know around this planet to prevent Dorum you know to like not Dorum but the god she's trying to invoke to this planet you know they they are like shooting us but they can't hold it forever we need to act quick so i guess that would explain a lot then of why we haven't been getting much divine intervention that's true and they need us like a lot and it's just the four of us and we need to stick together that's true otherwise there won't be anything anymore exactly we have no choice we've just gonna have to whatever differences we have we're just gonna have to accept them and make the most of it and finish this yes Ronnie can still change though yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes, but yes I, I totally agree with you like it's insane so as you guys are discussing this and other people are starting to wake up and this new realization of the stakes of this world are slowly starting to dawn upon you in dawn you get ready for your trip to new dawn it hopes to stop dorm's next plan now tell me you didn't see that coming hey they go all like what ronnie has a daughter and you're like that's not a chilling truth i've known that since like the third episode but the rest of them didn't, and they're all blown away. I love how Kalsar just couldn't let it go. Oh my goodness. Anyways, you know what was also great? Dwarves in space. Oh my, I've been waiting to tell you that tale, Traveler. I've been wanting to throw Borodon up in space for ages. Oh my goodness, that was fun. 
I actually thought he may try to throw something else over the edge, but looks like we're in luck, which is good. Well, anyways, travelers, I need to go try to find some more interns from Battle Bards and see what's going on there. But if you wish to aid us, why don't you go ahead and drop us a review on the, the Etunes or the Stitcher? We'll really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if you want to drop by the old Twitter sphere and say what up, Wingover, I'll totally hit you back, I swear. But, travelers, I have to go run downtown, so. I bid you adieu. Ta-ta!